morning and welcome everyone. I'm very excited to have one of my favorite vendors here to help with education. And we always want to give value in this podcast, not to the agents, but also to potential buyer and sellers. Uh, most, as we were just talking about off air, most people, the general public only hear about the residential real estate market and the residential real estate loans and mortgages and, and how that plays out. Uh, however, in the, the land selling world, our lenders are very different. And we have uh, one of our favorite lenders here today. It's Texas Farm Credit. I've had a chance to work with Wade for a really long time. Uh, and, and we wanted to jump on. I know it's the end of the year and some of y'all are crunching to make some sales. Um, and also there's other people preparing for 2024. So there's a lot of new lending opportunities or we should say tools to add a little more value and to help those individuals and buyers maybe that are using a loan. Um, and, and to kind of, you know, sweeten the deal or just add some education of, hey, listen, I know the rate might be high now. We have products now we can help to, to lower it later, things like that. Um, so we're going to dive in. Um, but first, you know, I definitely want you all to introduce yourselves, uh, you know, tell them a little bit about your lending institution. There are some people that have never dealt with land loans before. Um, this is an open pod podcast, by the way. So we have um, average Joes and uh, landowners, uh, agents, uh, uh, you know, anybody interested in learning more uh, about farm and ranch sales. So I'm just going to let you take it away, Wade. Okay. Um, Wade Sharp, I'm the branch manager, vice president of Texas Farm Credit in San Antonio, run the office here. Um, we offer a variety of lending services from traditional home loans on residential properties to rural properties with unlimited acreage to wineries, specialized facilities, feed businesses, any anything that can touch agriculture, we essentially offer, you know, products for. Uh, I've been here for eight years or going on eight years. Uh, I've always been in the San Antonio office. Um, background is oil and gas prior to lending, but it's always been some sort of land or real estate, uh, you know, since I began, started working as a business professional. So that's kind of my background. I have two wives, or I have a wife, two kids, uh, not two wives. <laughs> I, do, I have a wife, two kids, uh, eight and five years old, Avery and Layton. And as far as busy, we're busy with extracurriculars and sports. And if it's not work, it's kids. So. <laughs> And howdy y'all, I'm Anissa Cervera. I am the relationship manager or loan officer for San Antonio. Uh, Wade is my branch manager here in the office. I've been with Texas Farm Credit for coming on three years. Uh, graduated from Texas A&M University. And I was an inside sales rep before that. So um, always in a sales aspect and uh, wanted to tie that into the agricultural industry. So Texas Farm Credit was the perfect fit for me. Uh, I think Wade said it best, you know, we service the ag community um, from, you know, small land loans up to the couple thousand acres. So anything ag related, we're definitely going to be your go to. Um, I'm a horse girl at heart, a uh, show in the Rain Cow Horse Association. I've got a little healer dog. She's my life. But um, my family is in China Grove, Texas, so southeast San Antonio. And uh, we've got some property out there and just enjoy spending time together. So, but thank you for having us, Lindsay. You're welcome, man. You're the full package, Wade. Where'd you find <laughs> her? <laughs> I, she was she was totally random resume pull, but I I it was impressive. So that's how we... That's how we met. So she's done a good job coming on her background and everything fits with what we do very well. So she's been a tremendous help in San Antonio. Absolutely. So, I'm, it, you know, it must be intimidating. Uh, I, I, I tell people, you know, I deal with kind of the nurturing and preparing the land. But sometimes when you deal with uh, finances and, you know, jumping down that whole realm, a lot of people are uncomfortable with that. So, um I'm I'm guessing just with your background and and being able to kind of understand that is truly helpful in this industry. For sure, it definitely has been and the guidance I get from Wade and our RPs throughout the association is super helpful. So, um I always like to say if I don't know the answer, I'm going to find it out. So, we've got, you know, extensive resources for me to use and, you know, just like you said, my background has definitely helped. So, 
Well, awesome. Well, I'm happy to work with you. We're, we're ready for a strong 2024. I know that uh, it's been a little interesting with interest rates. What can you tell us about that, Wade? Uh, as far as where we're at today, you know, prime being at eight and a half percent, there's a lot of economic uncertainty around inflation and the economy and, and where things are headed and going into an election year. Um, I know the Fed has come out and said they anticipate a pause on rate hikes, but all that means is they're not, they don't think they are going up any higher. So we really, we are unsure when we can expect to see rate cuts, um, hoping that we're going to see that happen sometime next year. If things are going, you know, it's going to depend on thing, how things are going into the economy. Uh, the quickest way to lower rates, unfortunately, is a recession. So if there is a recession, you can anticipate them to go down rapidly. Uh, if there's not, I wouldn't anticipate any major fluctuation in rates for 2024. I mean, maybe some light softening, but I don't anticipate anything major. So... Well, there you have it. The report <laughs> straight from the mouth of Wade Sharp, man. I was, can you, could you do me a favor and lighten that up a little bit for some? <laughs> do me I know, right? I know. Well, I mean, this say, is why financial people are intimidating because of that. <laughs> this is this is the the unfortunate truth of the situation we're in right now. So, I but I think you know we offer a variety of of things you know that like me and you have talked about before with the ability to convert rate rates and convert loans to the market rate when, uh, you know, the, the interest rate in market improves and things like that. It, it doesn't, you know, a high interest rate environment is a lot less, should be a lot less scary to people than it is. Uh, and so that's a good way to look at it is, you know, it's basically as soon as rates start coming down, all you're going to do is start seeing property prices go back up. Mm -hmm. Right now with rates high, you're seeing them kind of level off or even in some cases getting a, a better a, a break in price because of people's inability to sell property quickly enough. So, you know, there's going to be some offsetting. To, so people people taking the approach, I want to sit around until rates get low before I buy something. In my opinion, those people are taking the wrong approach. You take the approach. If I find something I love, you buy it now. You pay a little bit for more for it in the in interest in the short term but you know two years from now when rates are down low you can get into something that's more comfortable reprice your loan you didn't miss out on the property and ideally your property will be appreciating at that point and that's the whole part you know idea around buying real property nobody buys a real estate hoping that it stays the same value or goes down so. Absolutely. So I'm going to totally agree with you. And I want us to maybe dive into what you just said a little deeper um, and, and use some examples. So I actually just got out of a transaction where the clients bought the property for appraised value. And, and mind you, we haven't had Oh, sorry, guys. I have this kamikaze fly. Okay. This is the second podcast. This fly has tried to attack me. And I'm like, after this is over, I'm totally going through and killing him. Like it is, I'm not kidding. He'll land on my head. Like you just saw him a second ago. Just wait. It'll get, it'll get interesting. But just so you, just to warn you, this isn't, this isn't your average professional podcast. Things can happen. It gets <laughs> a, little, a little wild sometimes, but back, back to what we're talking about, because it's very valuable. Um, I had clients buy and sell at appraised value. And, you know, we just came out of a market where, you know, it was somewhat inflated prices. It was great interest rates, but the prices were a little higher. So I, I totally agree with you. We have a saying, you know, you make money when you buy. Uh, and this is a buyer's market. So buying that property, right, you know, our cash buyers are out there and they're buying properties. And, you know, and I think educating these buyers that have to have a loan, what those opportunities really are. So um, could you kind of, um, for some of us that don't understand lending, um, maybe dumb it down, um, the conversion that you were talking about and some of the, the strategies that are, are possible uh, if you're buying right now at this interest rate? Anissa, you wanna take, take this one? I got it. Yes. Yeah, so, um, you know, the saying goes, marry the property, not the rate. So if you get a high interest rate right now, you're not married to that forever. You know, here in the next year, hopefully, or next couple of years, 
if rates come down significantly and it's going to benefit the customer in the long run, we're able to do a rate modification to their loan where you avoid all traditional refinance costs and essentially just update the rate. So no, you know, go into title, no getting a new appraisal, none of that. We just update the rate as, like I said, as long as it benefits the borrower. Um, as long as they've been, you know, on time monthly payments throughout the year, they have that option available to them and it would be a 25 basis point fee uh, based off of whatever the loan amount is at that time. Uh, and then I think another important thing to factor in is because we're a cooperative structure, you know, Farm Credit offers a patronage program. So our borrowers also will receive a cash back dividend typically every year for the life of their loan. Um, based off historical values, that's typically about one to one and a half percent of their interest um, on dollar amount, essentially a month, um, excuse me, tongue tied, a month's worth payment back in their pocket. Now, of course, that is going to be based off of how well the association does each year. So it will fluctuate and then also based off of whatever their loan amount is. But it's a good cash back, you know, something that they can pay back to their loan or go buy their family a nice gift or do something like that. And so essentially, just like y'all were saying, you know, you can get that property right now, pay a little more right now. But in the long term, you're going to be able to get that low interest rate. But you got that property at the, the better price right now rather than waiting long term. And I can confirm what you said. I had clients that totally forgot about um, the patronage program. And they're like, this check just showed up. And they're like, we had no idea. And it, it's kind of interesting because I know there's other programs out there with land lenders. Um, and that little added benefit, I know that it most people aren't used to it because you don't see a mortgage company, you know, writing a check if everything goes well back to the client. Uh, so it's a, it's a very interesting opportunity. Um, and I've seen it, uh, firsthand with my clients being stunned that, you know, it actually was a, a decent amount depending on, you know, like you said, all the categories that had to be fulfilled there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I've closed on a couple of people and they're like, they'll call me later on. And they're like, what is this? And like, we talked about it, but it's yours. You can keep it. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, it's always a great surprise. So <laughs> money from your lender is always a great surprise. For sure. Awesome. Well, wait, um, can you talk a little bit uh, about other opportunities that you have uh, as far as not just in land, but um, maybe dealing with uh, agricultural, the agricultural side of it, agricultural business? I know that that's kind of, uh, you know, wineries, you know, I live in Fredericksburg, so wineries are huge. Can you tap into some of the other um, opportunities that that our viewers may not know about when it comes to ag lending? Sure. I mean, so as far as services that we offer, I mean, we offer anything from various types of pasture insurance, crop insurance, mortgage loans, you know, but when you talk about specialized ag, um, I mean, a perfect example is one I'm working on right now. I have a customer owns 130 acres in near San Marcos. They have spent a tremendous amount of cash installing a vineyard on this property. I mean, fencing, irrigation drip systems, roads, like there's no improvements, but the vineyard is there and they wanted to recoup some of that money. So they come to me, they own the property outright with no liens. They come to me, say, I want, they want a million dollars back, you know, of the money they spent installing the system. And we did an actual capital, we're doing an actual capital replenishment loan and replenishing them the capital they spent on installing this drip irrigation system, which they could basically not get that anywhere else. I mean, that's a very specialized type of financing that it's, we even broach kind of towing the line of actually calling vineyards ag at this point but especially at the scale they operate here which is mainly like i have a vineyard but it's only five acres and it's not and you know we're using it to make our very limited products and then a lot of our grapes come from other wineries or other vineyards and we import them so i mean it's not these these operations aren't like california or napa where there's hundreds of acres of grapes you know it's just a totally different world down here so we had to, we took some time getting comfortable with that, but now that we are, you know, we offer some great products there. Um, feed stores, if like if what anything that makes eligible eligibility, we can finance a tractor supply if someone's buying a tractor supply because of the agricultural aspects in, involved with that business. Typically, tractor supplies are 
uh, selling bird seed, and that's a throughput item of agricultural products in addition to tractors. You know, I mean, like we we have really expanded our approach to how we look at what's eligible. And so it's it's helped us get into those specialized uh, financing situations more, which we like for the most part, they're risk. They can be riskier than a normal real estate loan, obviously. So we, we are we're a little bit more conservative in the approach to who we're financing for these operations. But if they're strong, qualified borrowers, uh, we I mean, we have a we're starting to get a very large portfolio of these more specialized type facilities for sure. That's awesome. Uh, and it's it's crazy to see how uh, the wine industry has grown and especially into Texas. You know, I tell people all the time it's still in my mind, it's still a science experiment. We don't even know which grapes are good. Like we're still trying out. There's so many types of grapes. And we're still trying to figure out which is the one. So I just think it's so neat to see so many popping up all over. Um, and some of them actually make some really good wine. Uh, but that, yeah, I okay. So lending on feed stores, ag business, and then you talked a little bit about insurance. So that's the part that I'm totally thrown off on because you see your brand, your Texas farm credit. Right. You know, we, think, we think land loan. So tell me, dig a little deeper into that because I really want to let the the audience know kind of the full service that you provide um, the agricultural community. So from an insurance standpoint, so we make row crop loans. You want to talk about specialized ag loans. So we will, we actually service farmers down, you know, all over the place and lend and secure our loans with their, with their crops, with their output. And so when you do that, it requires, we require them to insure their crop because if there's some sort of flood, tornado, event, then we have no, we, they can't pay us back. There's no security on the loan. So the insurance is kind of our collateral if our collateral was to get destroyed. Just like we make people insure a million dollar facility that we build on their wine, on their wine property. Like it's, it's a, it's a method of protection. So because we require that, I think, you know, we've gone out and, and started offering crop insurance, obviously things like that, multiple levels of that. Um, we don't mess with that much in San Antonio. I don't have one farm loan. I don't think Anissa does either. So uh, we're more in the winery feed store ag business side of that. Now down co in our coastal offices, tons of production loans. So that's why we have crop insurance. Uh, the second type of insurance we offer is pasture range and forestry. Is it forestry or forgery, Anissa? Forestry. Forestry. And that's so basically the PRF is drought insurance. Um, it's a government subsidized program, dollar for dollar matched by the government. One of the few things the Obama administration did that's actually a benefit for agriculture. Um, so I'm in the program on my own personal property. I know a lot of our, our employees, other employees are, and it's it's a really great. So basically, it takes the average 70-year rainfall for your grid that your property is located in, and, it, and you spread it out in periods over the year. So let's say you pick five periods. Would, those periods would be two months each. And if your property or your grid is less than the average 70-year rainfall, that will trigger a payment of your policy. And you get paid. You they send you a check in the mail. If it's higher, then you know there's no payment triggered for that period. But you may get a payment triggered for another period that covers your premium. I've only been in the program. This is my first year in the program, but I just bought property in 2022. Uh, this year, in my January February period, which is the first period I bet on, I say bet on insured during this year, it paid my entire policy and then. I got a check in the mail. So I am in the good. I've got a check in the mail. I'm not going to owe this policy any money. And the rest of the year is just checks is just going to be to the bank if it continues to be relatively dry, which it has. So I've triggered. I'm, I just received my third check of the year yesterday from our my pasture insurance policy. So these are kind of things like people don't even know they're existent um, when we're closing loans. On, pro on purchases of property, 200 acres or more, we kind of make it a standard to include some quotes for these products in, in the packet so people understand it's available, especially something like that that's 
government subsidized. It's built for the landowner to win. It's built to offset feed costs during dry periods. I mean, it's an amazing program and it's relatively cheap. Like I, I have 230 acres and I think my annual premium would be like 800 bucks. And that means if it rained, you know, it, it exceeded the average in every single period that I have covered in the year, which is extremely rare. I think that's only happened once in a 20 year history. So it's, there's just a lot of little products we have out there that we kind of, and a lot of times we're not selling them until we're closing on deals with people. So that's a lot of probably why you don't know about it. Right. Because, you know, this is something we slip in the package whenever everybody signed their closing documents and then try and sell them on it. It's actually the pasture insurance is the easiest thing we have to sell at this whole company because it's literally speaks for itself. So as long as it's subsidized by the government, it's almost a no brainer, you know, for sure. And then also the LRP, so livestock risk protection for our cattle ranchers. So essentially that's going to protect, you know, unborn calves, or if they had an issue calving, um, you know, it covers the cost of whatever that price per weight is. So you're also hedging your, your cattle sure. prices through that livestock risk protection program. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a feeling that it's going to go, if a cattle market is going to go down, you can lock in your prices through that, through that program, which like, don't even get me in a NISA line because we only understand it to a very limited amount because I don't think we have any cattle loans either, no. <laughs> but I know it's something we offer and it's, and you know, cattle people find a tremendous amount of value in it. So. That is awesome. And I'm sure, you know, you were talking about multiple locations. So tell us about the areas that you serve. So he mentioned our coastal offices that so we've got some, uh, are, you, are you talking about offices or like the loans that we are servicing? Oh, all of it. The, all of kind of, it. You know, cause some people still like to walk into an office, but at the same time, you know, your service areas, you know, we kind of dipped into like, you cover a lot and it also mm -hmm. seems like you cover a lot of Texas. Sure. Yeah. So Texas farm credit services over a hundred different counties. Um, essentially the southern portion of the state up the eastern side. Um, our corporate office is in Robstown, which is by Corpus. And we've got offices in Westlaco, Laredo, uh, here in San Antonio, Pleasanton, up to the east. We've got um, the Woodlands. We've even got Dallas, uh, Nacogdoches. We're pretty spread out, um, but we cover a, a substantial amount of um, area. And then loans, we've got them all over. Um, being in San Antonio, a lot of ours will originate in the South, but we've got a couple Central Texas, and then every now and then we'll get some East Texas loans. But um, yeah, we're pretty, we get a pretty good coverage of the state. So being right here on the boundary of South Texas and the Hill Country, you know, as you can imagine, Lindsay, I mean, from anything from Mason to San Antonio, we get a lot of opportunities at, and then anything from San Antonio to Brownsville, we get a lot of opportunities at in this office just because it's geographically you got 200 miles in every direction of really desirable land that you know people from san antonio are out to find, out, out to purchase so you know you we get we cover a pretty big area and say so anybody any farm credit office that's going to be in a metro like san antonio is going to cover a lot more territory geographically than let's say a rural office that's just in blanco and they're servicing people from Blanco and servicing products in Blanco. So it's really just dependent. Like it's a very different picture for a Metro office versus a rural office. And that's why we say, you know, a Metro office, we're doing mainly real estate loans to higher net worth or just, you know, those type of individuals. And then you get these rural offices that are doing a lot of the production, agriculture, uh, farming, local, you know, localized, something that would need a localized lending brick and mortar office to, to service their deal. So. Well, yeah, I've seen you, I've seen you out pretty far past San Antonio. So I know your coverage <laughs> area, um, you know, pretty much covers the state. So that's, sure. that's, that's really awesome to know. Um, well, there's a few other, I think, high points that I like to share. I know some people aren't big on looking on websites, but I know your website has a lot of information. So if you're listening, definitely check that out. Also, in the description for y'all um, listening, I have uh, I have Wade's information. If you have any more questions, I will tell you, you know, these people are awesome. Like that you are not bothering them. Call them on the phone. Ask them questions. 
we'd love to help you. Um, also, if you know somebody that might be of need of their services, you know, this is a great organization and a great business to be a part of. But like I said, it's not just land lending. I, you know, a, a lot of the insurance opportunities or we know people that may want to sell their feed store uh, and things of that nature. So, you know, having having more knowledge like I said, in the beginning, we want to add value and we want to kind of open the eyes because I feel like we hear the residential real estate news and we think that's all the news and it really isn't uh, when it comes for our specific per, uh, uh, profession um so I'm, I'm my biggest thing is i always tell people i was like check out their website i was like there's a lot of information um you know it really covers everything as well if you want to do some internal digging um but is there anything else you guys want to add or anything coming up i just think it's important for people to know for sure when it comes to us like it's not just land. We can finance improvements. We can, that's, that's, I think probably one of the bigger misconceptions of farm credit. They're like, they are just land. They just do land loans. And like, yes, we do do land loans. Yes, we do home loans. Yes, we find, you know, we can build, you know, tanks, ponds, cabins, help with the installation of electricity, roads. Like there are a lot of things we can do to assist and facilitate someone developing their property into what they want to see it as or, or want it to be. And so I think a lot of buyers get hung up on, this isn't what I want. This is not, there's no electricity here. There's not a septic here. There's not this here where, and the standard answer from a realtor is like, okay, well maybe we'll go look at something else or trying to find you something else. Well, now that answer can be, well, call this guy, get him a bid and he can finance this for you you know, if you really like the property. And so I think it's important for people to understand, like we offer, we are not just financing acquisition of land. We can take it all the way from raw basic land into your million dollar home with a pool or your winery or your, you know, I mean, there's a, whatever it is that we can pretty much find a pathway for it. Except unless it's like a hotel or something, that's, that's probably more of a commercial a commercial banks deal, but when it comes to residential rural agriculture, there's really nothing we can't do to, to help support that. So you're giving away my secrets. Cause let me tell you this, knowing that y'all did this is probably why I had such a successful few years because even now we're limited on inventory. So people have these buyers have this idea in their mind. And they're like, I want, you know, this land and this house and this pond and this type of fencing. So, you know, there's not a lot out there. And what's out there, it's not going to be perfect. I mean, it's almost close to impossible to find that unicorn, what they have in their mind. So being able to present that opportunity you just mentioned to say, listen, how about, you know, the location we can't change and really the, the basics of the land we can't change, you know, dirt is dirt. Um, we can bring it in, but it's kind of hard, you know, outside of that. So it's like, hey, let's find the, a beautiful piece of land and we can build the pond, build the fences, build the house, build the barn. Um, and we can do it all in one loan. And I will say for those that are listening, um, you have to look back in our podcast roles because I just had Jeff on who does a lot of those types of loans uh, with Texas Farm Credit. So you'll have to list if you're interested in that product and knowing more about how that works. We we actually covered it in the last podcast. So I'm so glad you brought that up. But absolutely, for agents out there, it's close to impossible to find what the buyer's dreaming of, and to be able to have a lending product that can do it all for them. Um, it's 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 it really icing on the cake. Like it solved a lot of problems for me and buyers just not being able to find. Um, and, and, and like, you know, I live in the hill country. So a lot of the properties, the homes have not been updated. We deal with a lot of older homes. And so, you know, it's kind of like, Hey, let's make this house, the guest house and let's build your dream home on the property. Uh, so it, I, I want, I want to say that that's awesome. You brought that up because it is something people have no ideas out there or the ability or agents even know that that's the tool in their toolbox. Uh, but definitely listen, um, to the podcast prior. It's going to be Texas Farm Credit, but it'll be with uh, your associate, Jeff, and he's super cool. I love that guy, but it's so great doing business with y'all. Thank you so much for being on today and taking a little time to share your knowledge. 
Uh, my last question, Wade. And obviously, chime in because I feel like he's going to give me a doomsday answer. What <laughs> What do you think to come in twenty twenty four for the land market? I think you're going to see a collection of inventory for the first six months. And then I think, I hope that the second six months, you're going to start seeing, I don't, I, I think you're going to see it be busier than it was in 2023. In the second half of 2023 versus the second tw half of 2024, I think you're going to see it busier than you do right now. Um, I think all of this can change based on what election polls say and what election results are. But if everything is trending the way it's trending right now, I think you'll start to see a lot of confidence for the future in the from in the economy. But like, like I don't want to be specific in what I say. Ah, right this, now. Is, this is the type of it's my podcast. You can be specific. I think if what? Trump continues to be blowing Biden out in the polls through the course of next year, then I think there's gonna, you're going to see a lot of confidence. I'm so going to tag work. him in this podcast. So. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. I, I really, I believe that's true. I think you'll see a lot of people. Uh, I think you'll see a lot of confidence uh, if we can, if things, if we're looking like we're seeing a change in an administration. So, well, and here's what I'm thinking too. If it goes the other way, which I hope to God it doesn't. I feel like it's going to be the COVID effect all over again. People are going to be rushing out of the cities. They don't want to be in the cities. We saw that in COVID. People were looking for second homes, second rural homes with some space, um, you know, uh, more just more land in general. Um, so I, I, I also feel there's going to be another. I think either way, it's going to be great for land. But is it going to be great for us as an economy? Um, and I guess that's my PC way of saying yeah. it. Well, and I, I think either way, uh, politically, that you do, you see interest rates soften over the next year regardless. So it's just, is it going to be because of people anticipating our problems are going away or is it going to be because of a recession? It's just going to be with what, what does it? The good thing for us is in Texas and especially specifically rural land, it's, it's, I don't want to say recession proof. Nothing is recession proof, but we're in the right spot to off to stand off and stand against a reset, like the traditional recession. Right? Mm -hmm. We are in an excellent place. There's a thousand people a day moving to Texas today, today, every day. So as long as people are flooding in here, you're going to see an economy that is a lot stronger than let's say other states in the nation that people might be abandoning for whatever reason. So. I'm so, it's so funny. If this is the one podcast you don't have to be PC on. You can, you can say <laughs> California, <laughs> the economy they created. Yes. I, I think, you will, I think you'll see states like California and other states suffering massively if we have a recession. Absolutely. Because people are leaving. And, and the policies are not great. And it's obvious. I mean, people don't leave places where it's great. That's why people come here, because Texas is, is great. And there's a lot of opportunity here and a lot of wealth. And I don't know. I just I, I, I'm, I am positive and I am, you know, excited for the future for at least what we're doing for sure. I, I don't I think we've gone. I think this year was rough. For a little rough for most people in real estate, but I think you're going to see the results of this year. People adding people inventory coming onto the market, things good, good things happening. I think you'll see things turn around, and everybody who's sitting around on their hands the last part of this year will be busy again before they know it. You know, so absolutely. And like I said, we're not sitting on our hands, even with interest rates. We, deal, we still do have the cash buyers. We still do have people with their acquisitions and parking money. And they had a 1031 exchange and they're having to do that. So, um, you know, we're still moving product. But like you said before, and I, I also want to remind everybody, you make money on real estate when you buy. You have to buy right. And now's the time to buy right. There's some great deals out there. If you're looking for one, get with a farm and ranch real estate agent, somebody that's in the market. 
and knows these deals. Most of these deals are not publicly known. They're not on the internet. They're not being advertised. Um, so don't be scared of that interest rate because there's opportunities like these fine folks at Texas Farm Credit had talked about. So I'm gonna let y'all go. Thank you so much for your time again. And we look forward to the future and Merry Christmas, y'all. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Thank you so Thanks, much. Lindsay. You're welcome.